Space Babies. Greetings. This is another Doctor Who review, not Doctor Who Revisited. I decided to put that on a bit of a hold for now uh, because, you know, Doctor Who's back uh, in full swing uh, for a full season. So, for the moment, Doctor Who Revisited is going to take a back seat. And I'm just going to do Doctor Who reviews for the new episodes until the uh, end of the current season. Uh, so don't worry about uh, Doctor Who Revisited. It's not completely gone. Uh, I've got several seasons already recorded and uh, edited and whatnot. So don't be uh, alarmed by that. For now, we're just going to focus on the new season with Shudi Gatwa and Millie Gibson as the Doctor and Ruby Sunday with their the debut episode, the, the premiere episode, I should say, of... Uh, season 14, the new se new who new who season one, whatever you want to call it. To me, it's season 40. So yeah, space babies. That is the season opener for Shuri Gutwa's first uh, season. Uh, not this is technically not necessarily Shuri Gutwa's first episode. I mean, he did kind of had the giggle. His first proper full episode is the Church on Ruby Road. Uh, which uh, I already reviewed on this channel, I believe. Uh, but yeah, so the premiere episode of season one, which, by the way, it's not even the first episode to feature Ruby because she was introduced in Church of Ruby Road. But uh, yeah, so, so Space Babies. Yeah, that's a thing now. Space Babies. And you know what? As ridiculous and stupid as it is, it's Doctor Who. It is Doctor Who to a T. I mean, it feels like Doctor Who again. It, it's, I mean, again, the premise is ridiculous. Space Baby's running a space station. But, thinking about it, this is the kind of stuff that Doctor Who does. This is the, the old Russell T. Davies, Stephen Moffat, even going all the way back to the Philip Hinchcliffe era. This is a Doctor Who episode through and through, and, uh, I don't love it, but it's Doctor Who, and I kind of like it. So, yeah, first, let's just start off with the obvious, I would say, with, with you know, uh, how this episode begins. It, it picks up right after um, the end of Children Ruby Road. I mean, it's literally reusing some of the scenes, I believe. I don't know if they just straight up re reuse the same scenes, or if they reshot the same scenes again. Uh, I believe Doctor Who used to do that back in the day. Uh, uh, spe specifically for uh, the classic series uh, in uh, the cliffhangers and stuff, particularly in the black and white era. But, uh, yeah, so the first play the Doctor takes here, dinosaurs. I mean, it's always weird to me how this show's existed for 60 years. 40 seasons on television, and they never just, you know... Hey, let's go visit some dinosaurs in the prehistoric era, in the Mesozoic era, Cretaceous period, uh, the Jurassic period, whichever period had dinosaurs uh, that you want to focus on. Uh, so yeah, I like that this is the first place he's taking Ruby, and uh, this is kind of a bit of a nitpick for me, but it, it's more on display in this episode, not so much the next episode which we're going to talk about, but... Uh, it's really, it feel, kind of feels like Russell T is kind of rehashing his own stuff. Uh, like with the um, uh, stepping on a butterfly thing. I mean, he literally does that in this episode. Uh, the, the, the phone thing. Again, I get it. It's, it's kind, of, kind of moments that are necessary. But even in Russell T's first run as Doctor Who showrunner, uh, the, the whole phone thing that he did with Rose, then he did it again with Martha, and then he did it again when, with um, uh, Donna, is that ki kind of served a purpose uh, in the episode itself, you know? And, well, strictly speaking, that wasn't uh, Russell T. Davis doing it. It was, uh, for, for Martha, that is, it was um, Chris Chibnall doing it. Yep, and it's Chris, Chris. didn't expect Chris Chibnall's name to, to pop up in this review, probably. But yeah, in 42, it was Chris Chibnall who brought back the idea of the phone that can talk, all that can uh, phone call all the way back to the present. Uh, but yeah, he did it. the beginning of the episode was a small, tiny moment, and then it became much more important later down in the story. 
with Donna. I believe it was a Russell T. Davies episode. Um, uh, the Doctor's Daughter. He did it because he needed to talk to Martha in that episode. So, doing it in this episode kind of serves no purpose. Other than just to show Ruby that she can talk to her mom wherever she is. Which they kind of already set up at the end of the episode anyway. When they, the Doctor goes back... Uh, to meet with Ruby and her uh, mother and grandmother. So, I don't really see the purpose in having that scene. Uh, it's re really just a rehash of uh, Rose talking to her mom on Platform 1. Which, in and of itself, kind of made no sense. Because she came back about a year later. But that's, you know, neither here nor there. So, yeah. The, the, uh, the, that's one part of it. Uh, again, the stepping of the butterfly thing I like. Uh, and uh, I just kind of like how the Doctor very quickly and easily fixes it. Uh, because the Doctor can do that now. Uh, it's a thing that the Doctor can do. Get over it. Get used to it. Uh, but yeah, so that, that was a, a fun moment right there. And uh, on to the uh, Space Babies. First of all, before we even talk about the Space Babies themselves, I just love seeing the TARDIS flying through space and landing inside that space station. I wish we get more scenes... Of, uh, the of seeing how the TARDIS flies properly. How the TARDIS lands in places. Uh, you've got the budget for it now. So I wish we got to see more scenes of that from now on. And uh, yeah. The space station itself. Like I said. It's a standard Doctor Who episode. It feels very Doctor Who-ish. There's a creepy monster. There's a concept that, we're, that seems completely alien to us. Like babies. With, you know, higher intelligence running a space station. And, you know, there's the whole thing of, like, the, the one reality at the top, the second reality at the bottom. Uh, there's a mystery to solve. It had me, it had my mind racing. It had me on the edge of my seat trying to work out who this or what this monster is. And just like the doctor, I mean, I was like, I, I was curious as to why the doctor um, was afraid. Of uh, this monster. It, it, it was a, a big plot point And it worked in uh, the episode itself. And I, I, I think it was a really good way. Uh, to strategizing it. Um, uh, sorry. In, in the uh, episode itself. In the writing. And in the direction. And how the editing worked. It has how the, the doctor uh, was constantly in his mind. Wondering about this uh, event. Why he was afraid of the monster. Monsters are usually afraid of the doctor. Not the other way around. So why was he so scared? And uh, of course, it, it popped into my mind that it was deliberate. It was meant to scare him. It was specifically designed to scare anyone who sees it and hears it. And I kind of like how that all fell into place and uh, the idea and explanation for it. And it kind of, I kind of really do like and appreciate the fact that they're literally just treating the uh, the show as a fairy tale again, which you know it kind of harkens back to the Matt Smith era. Uh, with you know the doc the basically the Doctor Who universe is just one great big fairy tale, and I love that they're kind of continuing how space stuff works, uh, for lack of a better word. Like you know, in the previous episode, you had an entire ship operated entirely by ropes, and it, it's kind of what the babies built on the space station, the the whole apparatus thing. And of course, I like the uh, the idea of there was that secret woman, uh, Jocelyn, who was running things behind the scenes as uh, Nanny. And I like the, the voice filter there, the Nanny filter. Uh, the, again, these are all elements that w would not work in any other franchise besides Doctor Who. So that's why I love it so much. The monster made out of bogeys uh, was disgusting. And I could have done without the whole... The, the, the space station essentially farts to get to where they need to go uh but it is what it is i mean if we get that once in a while i'll be fine with it um remember russell t kind of did the same thing with the Slothene at first but i mean he did get gave us great stories and every once in a while you know he gave us uh, a burping uh trash bin or uh uh, farting aliens. So, you know, it's forgivable. It's a pass, okay? We, he gets a pass. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, 
here's something interesting. The Doctor can just switch off the TARDIS's translation matrix on a whim, which he did in the that screen thing. That was interesting. Never been done before. But uh, yeah, I'd be fine with it with if we never see it again. Uh, but yeah, so overall, I, I like the Doctor still keeping, trying to keep and maintain that whole uh, treading the line of uh, we save everyone, including the monster, in a way. I uh, wonder how long that's going to take. Spoilers, not lo not very long if you uh, watch the second episode that dropped on the same day. But, uh, yeah, I don't really think there's much I can say about this episode. Besides, you know, it's great to have Doctor Who back again. Uh, you know, n probably not the best episode to open a season with. But it's the perfect episode to let you know you're back in that same uh, Doctor Who world. That same very overly stylized universe. And it's got that Doctor Who aesthetic uh, to carry you on through this uh, upcoming season or series or whichever way you want to call it. So, yeah, I uh, well, I believe that's it. There, there's not much else I can say uh, besides that. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode uh, for another review. Let, be sure to let me know in the comments below what you thought about this episode. And uh, see you again in the next one. Goodbye for now. Hi there, thank you for watching the video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. I'll see you next time.